So I talked about the human state space method, which depends on finding a trick that couples states on the two tricks that you want to connect, that you want to transition between. And I also talked about the computer method, which of course generates the 35 by 35 matrix, which is all of the, uh, the states possible in the context of four balls and seven max throw. Um, and now I would like to uh, in, in the spirit of the only thing worth doing is worth overdoing, I would like to describe the human computer method, which um, is a little more deterministic, although not perfectly deterministic. It's more deterministic than just coming up with a trick that happens to share states in common with the two desired tricks that you want to transition between. But it's not as complicated as coming up with a full-blown matrix that has all possible states and all possible trajectories. So um, it's a little easier for humans to do. And what that method entails, what this method entails, is actually looking at the states and trying to come up with throws that turn one of these states into one of those states. Remembering that since these are prime tricks, which are anagrams, they have no states in common, so we can't just, you know, go straight over. By the way, what does prime mean? It means that we never revisit a state. You know, this, this state only appears once. If the trick had a bunch of throws and then later we visit this state again, okay, then it would not be a prime trick because we have came back to the same place as it were. It's the, the, the state, uh, the total state diagram loops back on itself. In this case, it doesn't, okay. We, we only visit these states once each and then, and then it's back to the beginning. In any case, um, what we want to do is look at these and see if we can pattern match and find a way to go from one of these states to one of those states it would be sufficient for a transition sequence to find only one um, way to go from one to the other. But I'll, I'll, uh, in the interest of describing the method, I'll do a little better than that. I'll find a few. So uh, the first thing to notice is when you, when you do a throw, um, the first x goes away and it gets p punted somewhere later in the future. And th what will become the first x after you do the throw is what is in the second position here. And so what we want to do is look at, at the second position, starting at the second position, these states, and compare those to the first position on these states if we're going to transition from this trick to that trick. And so let's, let's have a look and see if we can find something that we can do. For example, starting from the second position here, we have two x's in a row, a gap, and then one x. And here we have two x's in a row, a gap, and one x. So, would it be possible to get from this state to that state by making a throw? And the answer is, of course, that you can. If we threw from this state, if we threw a five, that would put this ball, one, two, three, four, five, it would put it in the next position. That is this state. So. If we, if we throw a 5 from here, we get into this state. Let's look at this one. Here, starting at the second position, we have um, uh, a ball, a gap, a ball, and then a, two spaces, and then one. Well, here we have a ball and a ball and two spaces in one, but we have this interloper in between. Would it be possible to put this ball in here? Then that would be this state. The answer, of course, is that yes, if you give this ball a two, it lands there, and then you have three in a row, a gap of two and one. Three in a row, gap of two, one. So if a two gives three in a row, a gap of two and one, which is this state. And then maybe another interesting possibility, just to maybe show the method a little bit, is um, what if we uh, go for two throws? This has two in a row, a gap, and then one. And this again has two in a row, a gap, and one. Could we put this ball out here but by the way, then there's a gap that we have to wait. So it would take a one, two, three, four, five, six to get it out here. And then you'd be obliged to wait one throw because there's nothing there. So that would be a six, zero.
Okay? And now these all directly imply transition sequences. So if we're doing 741 any number of times, that's what I mean again by this. Um, uh, let's let's start let's start this way and work up. Okay, if we finished seven four one, so seven got us into this state, a four gets us here, and a one gets us here. We're now in this state, having just thrown a one. Then a five gets us into this state, which, for all the state is concerned, looks like we just finished the four of seven one four. So we can go back to throwing sevens. Okay, so that's and we can repeat that. So there is a transition sequence. This, the fact that we found this connection implies this transition sequence. Now, let's uh, look at, um, let's look at the top one actually now. So if we are doing 741, okay, a one leaves us in this state, we have to get into this state, which a seven does, right? Because the trick is 741, you throw a seven, you're in this state. And then if we throw a 2, we're now in this state, which, by the way, is in the middle of 714, okay? So as far as the state is concerned, it looks like we've thrown a 7 and a 1, but we haven't thrown the 4 yet. So then we have to throw the 4. And we're, we're in the trick already. After you do the 2, you're already in this trick. You're in this state, but you're in this trick at this position. So you throw the 4, and then you can throw a 7 and a 1, and now there's a philosophical question here that you have to wonder about. Are you left in the trick 471, which is a rotation? Or, and, oh, and the transition sequence was 72. Or, instead, maybe you'd prefer to think of this as the transition sequence, and then you're in 714 in the home rotation. Doesn't matter, I mean, it's the same thing, okay, but. Um, but philosophically, if you want to go from 741 into 714, this would then be a three-throw transition. If rotations aren't allowed, this would be a three-throw transition. Even though this was only one throw, okay, you had to do the seven to get into the state, and then you had to do the four to get back here. So even though this is only one throw, this looks like a three-throw transition. That's just because it's, it's, it's in the middle of both tricks. Okay. Now let's look at this one, the 6-0 case. In the 6-0 case, we're doing 7-4-1 endlessly, and we want to become in this state, so we have to do a 7 and a 4 in order to be in this state. And then if we throw a 6-0, we're then in this state, which is the same as having just finished 7-1-4, so we can go right back in to 7-1-4 and repeat it. So there are some transition sequences that um, come from our ability to have identified a throw or throw sequence that gets us from one of these states into one of those states. But by the way, notice that I didn't, you know, make a 35 by 35 matrix. I just looked at the states, right? Um, on the other hand, I didn't get to choose how long the sequences were. I mean, this one happened to be a one throw sequence, and this one looks like it's one throw, except it's in the middle, so it turns into a three throw sequence. This looks like a two, but you have to do two throws to get ready for it, so it's really a four throw sequence. So this way it doesn't necessarily let you choose the the transition sequence unless you can find some way to to get to go from this state in two throws into this state, uh, which actually can be done. I mean, Two, two throws later, we have two X's, so we have to put this ball and this ball here and here, okay? So it's possible to do, but it might be that it isn't possible to do uh, it, in general. I mean, if you have two different tricks, you can't necessarily go from the last state of this one to the first state of that one in two throws, okay? So you can't necessarily find a two throw sequence. Um, in the case of the throw sequence, it is stronger at being able to identify um, transition sequences, all the possibilities uh, within the context of those throws that you're that you're uh, changing. Okay, so that's going this way. Now let's clear the board. Actually, I don't have to clear this one. I just have to clear the middle, so I got some space here. Okay, so here's seven, one, four. All right. Now let's go the other way. 
let's look at these states and see if there's something we can muss with to get into one of these states. Um, so for example, here, let's look at these. We have one, a gap, and then two. Here we have one, a gap, and then two, and then this guy is way out here. So, how about that? If you throw a six from this state, okay, you throw a six, that puts this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, puts him out there, right? Well, guess what? That's this state. So a six gets you there. Starting from this state, six gets you into this state. Um, another example is here we have three in a block and then a, a space of two and then one. Here we have three in a block and then a space of only one. What if we just move this guy into this position? Then it's three in a row, a gap of one and one, which is this state. So a three by the way, that's a one, two, three, right? If it gets a three, it's here. So those are also transition sequences in the other direction. Now these again, these look like they're both one throw, right? Except that we're going into the middle of the trick, so they're not gonna end up being one throw sequences. So here we are, we're doing, we're running seven, one, four endlessly. And let's say we wanna do the three, okay? So we have to do a seven, to get into this state, and then a 1 to get here, and then we can throw a 3. So we have to do 7, 1, 3. 7 gets us here, 1 gets us here, and then a 3 does the move, and now we're left in the bottom state of this. We, we're left here as if we had just done the 1, so we can then go right into 7, 4, 1. Okay, endlessly. So there's a transition sequence. And let's now consider this one. We're doing 714 many times, and we want to end on the 4, right? We want to end on this throw so that we're in this state, and that is the state from which if we throw a 6, we then end up here as if we had just done the 4. So now we need to do a 1, and then we are back into it. 741. And again, the philosophical question arises, is that 174 in, in the different rotation, or is it 741, but the transition sequence is two throws? I'll leave that to you to decide. But here's an example of coming the other way, again, looking at the states and finding a throw that connects the two tricks. So this is the human computer method, but it's not totally deterministic in the sense that if for some reason you look at these states and you look at those states and you simply cannot figure out how to do a throw that gets you from one to the other, then this method doesn't help because if you can't find it, you can't find it. But usually you can find it. It's not, it's not so difficult to um, identify uh, two or three throws that are the same as two or three somewhere. And if you get completely stuck, you could just say, from this state, what are all the possible throws? This one could go here or here or here or here or whatever. And you elaborate them all, and then you look and see if maybe one of them is the same. Okay, that's the human computer method. Quick comment, which I'll cover in more detail later. You can site swap these throws. If you have a six and a one, you can exchange the order of the balls. So the six Instead of landing six throws later from here, it can land five throws later from there, and instead of being a one, it could be a two. So this, once you have these sequences, you can swap their sites and generate new sequences from them. Okay.